Uh, I am pretty stoked on um, a couple topics uh, that I'd like to discuss today. One is I've really been to the, into this idea of opportunities and seeing opportunities and practicing moving on opportunities. But then I got kind of sidetracked this week um, by something I wanted to discuss with the group and get people's feedback on. There's a couple people within, within the Fonz family that I really want to get their take on it too. I mean, I know a couple of them can't be here today, but this is this idea of, of I put this poll up the other day, just like, hey, you know, if you had one of these skills that you could really develop and really, you know, would make your life better, which one would it be? And I just kind of threw out 10 things to see what people would say. Everybody, well, that's not true. Over half, three quarters were instantly marketing, 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 marketing. And it's something we throw out so much. And so I wanted to kind of begin our jumping off topic today talking about marketing. And before we started, Ben was kind of already stealing my thunder for the entire concept of what we wanted to discuss, which is um, how to build a really awesome marketing um, platform by being awesome. And I wanted to also just address everyone who like jumps to that idea of like, oh, marketing is my thing by asking a couple questions to go a little bit deeper. So Again, before we get started, if you if you have any questions, feel free to just like interrupt or you can use the chat bar on the side. Um, if you have anything you want to share, like links to projects you're doing, feel free to throw those in there. Um, but uh, and I'm sure you'll, you'll get the gist of it as we go. But so everybody's like, oh, marketing is the thing I want to do. And the question that I had is, what does that actually mean? Because as we're getting deeper and deeper down this, you know, we're inundated with quick fixes, which is like, oh, I'm gonna run Google ads. I'm gonna do Facebook ads. I'm gonna do Insta ads. I'm gonna build a funnel. I'm gonna talk about conversions. I'm going to talk about, um, you know, I'm gonna do a referral program. There's all these different things that we can do that we say marketing. But what I'd love to ask everybody that was like, oh, marketing is the thing that I need to work on most is what are you actually saying? Does that mean that your biggest problem is that you don't have enough clients? Does that mean you're having a hard time paying the rent for your, your space where you're working? Um, when you say, I think marketing, it has an alluring appeal as a sound, right? And once we open up the box of marketing, we look for quick fixes, right? Which is we look for this idea of like, okay, great. I can, I'm just going to run Instagram ads and I'm going to get a lot of attention and I'm going to get my marketing problem fixed. And I see what I see happen across the board is to, to everybody, even people that call themselves marketers, is they quickly can lose focus, right? And they get they get off where they're like, okay, I'm doing Google ads and Facebook ads and this and that. And it it comes to a point where they're confusing marketing with brand, with lead generation. Right. And so we start breaking this down. It's like, here I am, this entity in the universe, right? I'm just a guitar teacher, right? I do my thing. Um, I do I need more clients? And to get clients, what does that mean? Well, I need people to call me, right? And how do people call me? Well, they hear about me, but just calling me doesn't mean anything. There's still my offer, my value proposition, um, how I convey myself to them. And will they decide to want to work with me? Because we're in this unique thing where we're getting clients where it's a commitment, you know, they're trusting us to teach their kids or to help them get healthy or to teach them how to speak. I mean, stuff that matters, it's also very intimate. So my encouragement to so many people that I know that are trying to build their businesses is to really simplify their marketing to exactly what Ben said, right? Which is this, which is this, you know, is, is it's very difficult to get great leads from, uh, Instagram, unless you really know what you're doing, right? And there's people like Ali Tyler knows what she's doing. Nicola Ricardo, they really know what they're doing and they're great at it, but they're also awesome. And that's the thing is like, you see the videos of them and their energy is infectious and they're awesome. And they're obviously really good at what they do. So it's not as simple as um, putting out an ad where at the core, um, what it really is, is about just doing great work. So I wanted to, um, I want to open this up because I want to hear what Ben's talking about a little bit. I also want to hear about problems that you might be facing, but I want to hopefully just take a few minutes to start this thing off to try to help people find focus that we can, we can discuss together and we can share with them for things that will actually work. Because I know that I get so excited and I get so like, oh, I'm going to do this thing and it's going to work great. I'm going to put an ad in this magazine or I'm going to, you know, put up, um, 
put up like little things in my coffee shop that people can, and you get this sense of like, maybe this will work, but, and sometimes it will, but it's a, as a long-term strategy, you want to get to the point where Ben is, which is his phone's just ringing and he can't keep up. And when he does, and I had a really, I want to share this story that I think will maybe kind of tie it together is I, I have a nine-year-old son, super athletic kid. My wife is an actor. I'm a guitar player, run a tech company. You know, we're, he's, he's very, he's been bottled up this year and really struggling and he's so awesome, but we were really struggling with his, just, you know, his, you know, his energy and he's having a hard time. And my sister who is, uh, you know, she is a renowned expert in child behavior. I had to talk to her the other day and, and I was just like, Dawn, I really need some help here. I'm kind of having a, I don't, I'm, I'm at my wits end with Huck, right? That's, that's, that's where I was. And she's like, Eric, I have a quick piece of advice for you. She's like, why don't you treat Huck uh, as well as you treat all your customers at Fonz and your students? And I was like, oh, Dawn, brutal sister truth burn, which, you know, only a sister will tell you that, but it's the truth. And I'm obsessed about all of my customers, right? I, I have always been obsessed about my students. And this, I think, is the core marketing strategy for everybody in this group that I wanted to share is that nothing is going to be better than being obsessed about your clients, right? I've always been obsessed about my students ever since I started teaching. That's been my thing. I'm obsessed about their families. Uh, I'm obsessed about um, their success. I'm obsessed about getting to know them on their life journey. And that has really been the only marketing strategy that I've used uh, for my entire career of running my music school. And it's also, frankly, it's the only strategy that we're using at Bonds right now. You know, we're done with Google ads, we're done with Facebook ads because it didn't convey the same way. It's just trying to treat people really well did. And it's a long-term strategy. Uh, but for the people in this group, I think it's the way. And from that, you're allowed to do more great work, like what Ben's talking about, be more joyful, uh, be more confident, you know, like what, what Karen's talking about, have a voice, know your worth, know your value, and then it just starts growing. Not all businesses can do this, but people that are in this group, people that are, that are doing this type of work, that's our strategy, right? And that's marketing. And that also will give us, um, that will give us an insight into what brand actually is, right? A whole other conversation. And that's the thing that I wanted to, I saw that, that, that post and I was thinking to myself, oh my gosh, we need to talk about what marketing is and allow for ways to channel that energy in ways that works for us without getting so distracted. Because I'm distracted by nature. Like we're artists. A lot of us are artists or we're self-employed. This is a uh, more of a centrally focused way of, of, of building brand and, and marketing. And, and, you know, Ben, I wanted to circle back to you. Did, if you wanted to take just a second and kind of, again, share what you're seeing in your business and maybe speak to what I was talking about a little bit. And if anybody else wants to pipe in, just let me know in the chat and I'll make space for it. But let's open the floor for a second. <clears throat> yeah, Eric, uh, yeah, happy to share. And I think I'll start by saying most of what I learned early on was just uh, listening to other people um, and getting inspiration from other people instead of trying to reinvent the wheel, which is something I love to do, but I just waste so much time trying to redo things my own way. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you're saying the thing about being awesome. I mean, actually, I learned some of that from you, like your mindset. Just a couple of years ago, you, you gave a talk at a different program I was in, and I was like, this guy's awesome. I like what he's saying. You, you talked about your summer camp and just the way you treat people. And I picked up on that. So I just, I mimicked that, but it's, it's naturally what I would do anyway. It just feels good to me. Like, uh, this is a time where there's a lot of, um, distance between people. And I wanted to, um, yeah, just have, have a more personal connection with kids. I always ask them things about how they're doing. I try to keep track of what's going on in their life. Um, and every step of the way with my business, I'm thinking, what can I do that no one else is really doing that can be good for an eight nine or ten year old because that's what like in my soul that's how old i am so this is a really natural fit for me um uh so for, for example right now i've got a thing going on called a practice challenge i didn't invent this but um it's a little leaderboard and all the kids have this hung up on their wall and they have a little card and the, every day they practice they move up one notch 
You see, there's a Godzilla and a unicorn. Those are not um, my ideas. The uh, the last kids who won get to determine what's on here. So, like, I've never seen someone um, do this quite the same way. So I pay attention to what the kids like, uh, and then the parents are thrilled. The kid is really engaged. Um, let me get back to my point here. So we're talking about being awesome, I think. And then you're worried about because what you're facing, you just said at the beginning, yeah. you're packed, you're jammed, you can't yeah. take any more. Okay. Yeah, so I'm doing in-home lessons. Um, a couple weeks ago, I had like 18 or 20 students. Uh, right now, it looks like I'm going to have 30 to 35. And that's a lot for in-home because you got to factor in half an hour to an hour of travel. So uh, yeah, it's like a 45, 50 hour work week, I think, something like that, which is maybe getting a little scary. You know, I'm getting worried about keeping up my same level of devotion to each person. So I'm doing some real soul searching here, thinking about how to do that. Um, but I charge enough to make it worthwhile. Um, early on, so here, here's something useful. Early on, I did a lot of sweat equity, a lot of advertising through um, nothing paid really. I tried some Facebook ads, no result. Uh, I got a car wrap, like it would have been like a $1,500 thing, but it's got my name and my website and like guitars on the side of my car. Um, and uh, I used to like go to private schools and do special events or like rent out a community center and just let people know that they can drop in for this free class. So I've worked my butt off probably, you know, 15, 20 hours a week for free for a year and a half or so. Um, so that helps me gain what I've heard people call a critical mass of customers, maybe 10 people who really love me and I really love them. And those out of those 10 people, maybe five or six of them have sent most of my incoming clients to me because they're neighbors or they're old college roommates or something like that. Hmm. So uh, zero money spending on ads from here on out, but it was a, a lot of time invested and also just showing up every week doing a great job. Uh, like I make Christmas cards every year where I just write a little bit about what each student's working on so the kids see what the others are doing. Uh, I just really express my love. Like I genuinely love all of the people. I have no customers that I, I feel uh, funny about or like I wish I didn't have them. I love them all. Um, I think that's most of it. What's well, and it sounds like that's exactly what you were saying before. Is it? And then now uh, the other piece to it is, and this is the thing to always keep in mind: is a situational awareness, right? Your situational awareness is that you're almost as busy as you can be. You're almost maxed out to where you're not going to be able to continue offering the same level of service. So that's an operational thing. But the reality is that people from all over the country, due to the fact that the internet and people have opened their minds to online education are um are really you know open to being able to study with someone awesome in north carolina if you live in seattle which is which is which is such a cool thing so that's really cool to hear too thanks for sharing that is is there someone here that would like to speak to be maybe being at a different point like maybe you're building um maybe you're trying to get to that critical mass but would want to just kind of share an experience or talk a little about what they're um uh going through uh, hey, Jason, I see you just popped in or uh, Aaron or Whitney or Karen. Anybody, would anybody like to speak to that really quick? Yeah, no, it's it's interesting. My journey has just been it's it's been a little bit meandering um, more than I would normally like, because as you guys know, I'm a very goal focused person. And the goal that I was really had my sights set on and, and still do is singing professionally opera. Um, doing professional opera singing full time, essentially, and just having a few students on the side. So because I find that um, I found that my like, critical level of people I can handle in a day because of the amount of intensity and the person the personal nature of the work that I as a voice teacher do. Um, I'm more intense, it takes more energy, and I can only handle maybe two students a day, two hour long, I'm talking like two hours, two to three hours worth, you know, and that's one of those things where I'm trying to gauge like, okay, well, how do I manage this so that I'm not like burning myself and outputting? But at the same time, I've recently discovered something else, which is this podcast idea that I have and the, um, you know, the Zoom meeting interview thing that I did with my two friends that I posted in the Fonz group a couple of weeks mm -hmm. ago. Um, and that was just such an interesting experience for me. First of all, it's the first time I'd ever moderated anything like that. Um, and second of all, I consider myself an introvert and yet I was pumped when we were finished with that conversation. 
Like it was energizing. And all three of us were like, man, that was just such a good pick me up. Um, and if that's one area where like the next topic that we want to talk about possibly is diversity, like this big, I've realized I have what I jokingly call third culture kid privileged, um, uh, where I grew up in a when third culture kid is a, um, a, a technical term for someone. If you've grown up in a country in formative years in a culture that is not your parents' culture. Yeah. So, and the third culture is not like, oh, the mixture of those two cultures. The third culture is the common experience that all of us who've been in the situation forget, you know, regardless of which country it is, um, the common experience that we've had of just not quite belonging wherever we are and constantly having that like extra perspective. So anyway, I, I get to wander into topics that a lot of people, um, who look like me don't get to wander into, and I do so. <laughs> so, Karen, let me interrupt you um, mm -hmm. because I want to. Before well, this is top of mind, this is I. You know, you've come to almost all these, and I don't think I ever picked up on the fact that 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 two lessons a day is a really good number for you. Um, mm -hmm. That you, well, got, I, I've you, only just figured it out, so you know. <laughs> yeah, that, that you get super energized by this podcast idea. So let's let's parlay this into two quick talking points, um, and then that I think and that would be really helpful for everyone here. Is it one, if you did a podcast and then when you were done with it, you discovered something new and it was amazing and you're like, this is so fun, then do another one, right? Because I'm planning on it. And that's, this is what I, where I was getting to, what I'm running into is just so much imposter syndrome. Well, you know, <laughs> so just get over that because we don't have time for that. Yes, and I, that's stop a, it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, we, that's, I can, I can harass you and make you do it. I'll, I'll start messaging you and reminding you until you do it. That's no problem. But the, <laughs> The, the other piece to this is when I heard you talking, I was like, okay, and you, at the beginning of the day, you said you were starting to work with some professionals that are working on their speaking voice. So I'm going to ask you one more question. Like, mm -hmm. would, would you be most excited to be like making a lot more money or, or is it more important you to be like helping someone learn to sing opera? Like would, if you had to pick one of those two areas that was a bigger spot for your current focus, which one would it be? My current focus, quite honestly, if I'm being brutally honest, I need to be making more money. Okay. I need a little more independence. So here's what I would do. And I, I, I promise you that it will work. If I were you, I would put yourself, I would just say, look, um, yeah, you might be working with executives, right? Mm -hmm. I can, I mean, I can help you market to that because I don't know a lot of people that do it. Executive voice coach, right? To develop confidence, study skills, but you need to probably double or triple your rates. I don't, and I'm not going to, we don't want to talk about what they are, but you yeah, got yeah. to advertise them in a different way. And you say, yeah, I, of course, look at me. I do two people a day max because I'm so invested in their success. Yeah. Um, and, and I know because everybody that I've ever done this with, when they do a niche like that and they warm their way into it and you're like, yeah, you get the joy of being an expressive, creative person, but also this confidence that you'll have as an executive um, or whatever it is you're doing in your work, managing people, um, they look at money differently than we do as you know, historically being artists. The thing that will happen is you'll just get so busy, you'll be like Ben, right? Because you'll nerd out with these really smart people that are able to um, process really high level things, right? I'm, I'm currently teaching one of the first people that worked at Microsoft, right? And it's the, he, he wrote Microsoft Excel, right? <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And, and Sorry, I, I just him, have to laugh because I've done so much with Excel anyway. <laughs> yes. And, you know, and he's awesome. And I've taught him for three years and he plays like at a, prof he plays prog rock at a professional level because that big brain can do it. And it's been so awesome. You, that's what you should be focused on. And so if you do a podcast, you do your podcast on something that would, that I could go on Twitter to my tech founders groups and be like, Hey, this person can really help you with, with speaking. I highly recommend it. And you get a couple clients and you get in that circle where you're at least, I mean, it's probably three times what you're current charging. If you look at professional coaches charge and you'd be giving them so much value. And then what you've got is focus. Cause that's, that's your thing. You've been looking for a thing to, you know, all these great ideas, even exploring yourself, that's focus and not, I mean, I look at you and I'm like, oh my gosh, you could kill that. So if you're, if you, you and if you're doing a podcast, it's to help drive traffic to people to know you. Right. You don't need to worry about imposter syndrome. Like it's to help people gain confidence, develop their voice um, and get people to come your way. And if you parlayed that into also charging a rate that an executive would be like, that's who I want to work with. I promise you, you'd be busy. Yeah. So that, that's very unique. So, 
thank you so much for the encouragement. Again, it's been a process and it's, this is not like an area that you think of necessarily going into as a voice teacher. Like it's all about like finding all the kids and stuff like that. And it's been a while. It's been a process of figuring out this is actually what I'm good at, but also this is the amount of energy I put into it. Well, so. we have got to let go of the, like 90% of what we see in groups and by professionals and coaches that tell us things are people that either haven't done the work we're trying to do or that may have had some other success in a different era um, or and, and just stripping all that away and having situational awareness of whatever it is you're trying to do right now. Like I heard Ben say eight, nine and 10 year olds. And I was like, my lights all lit up. I was like, oh gosh, that's a perfect niche. I heard you say, oh, I'm helping this and I need to make money. That's your way. And if we can find that and focus it, but the only thing is other people just aren't doing it. That means you've got an opportunity, right? It's true. There really aren't that many people around there, like actually doing that as a niche. Just aren't that, are they, or are there, <laughs> you know, and, and that there aren't, and that is the, and, and sometimes competition means a great thing. Cause that shows there's a big market, right? Like if you're teaching kids to piano to kids, or if you're a personal trainer, Competition is great because it's a big market and you can and you can break yourself out um, sometimes and there's no competition just means you're the first person there. Right. Or it means there's other people that are reaching out to those execs that are doing it. They don't they don't need you to hear about them because they're probably making 400 bucks an hour working with CEOs to help them do their pitch decks. Right. And the CEOs are getting great values and uh, they don't they don't care what you think. Right. Because they're out there probably making a couple hundred grand a year. And they probably don't want to tell everybody what they're doing. Like, I don't know. That's just seems kind of why, why would you, you know? Um, so anyway, I want to, that is awesome. Let's do another one. Is somebody, does somebody else want to do a quick share? Jason, dude, how are you friend? Good. Yeah. Hey, yeah, this is, this is awesome. I, I didn't realize how <laughs> perfect this conversation was going to be. Uh, <laughs> I was like, I wanted to talk about this next week or something, <laughs> but this is a, uh, yeah, everything that you guys have been talking about is exactly what's been on my mind. Um, yeah, so um, it was cool hearing Ben talking um, because honestly, <laughs> it's been a big struggle for us is that about two years ago, I, I was like kind of hitting that critical mass personally, teaching piano. Um, in home and yeah net, not marketing it was all word of mouth i felt really good about things but um me and my partner shauna decided to open up this brick and mortar school like <laughs> six months before the <laughs> pandemic hit <laughs> um but uh we were struggling even before the pandemic hit because what happened was once we opened the school, we decided, oh, we will, we have more room so we can hire more teachers. We can buy all these instruments and offer more things. I was only really teaching kids. I, I mean, my, my sweet spot <laughs> was four to nine. And so but we can just get right past that and offer more things and get more people and our word of mouth marketing just stopped like and we thought and we, and we have a building that's right on one of the busiest streets in um, phoenix arizona and big huge sign i mean it was just just nothing could not get anyone to talk about it and um then when the pandemic hit it got even more challenging uh and so we tried doing Facebook ads and Google ads and just could not still just no traction on any of that. And we lost it. We had like eight teachers started losing them left and right. So we were getting small, whether we wanted to or not. And we mm. lost like over a third of our student count too, going in. Mm. Um, and, uh, that must have been really stressful with a new business and a pandemic and a more and a you know rent yeah it, it was really uh wow it was it's been it's been a little crazy but there was a point this was actually shortly before 
um, I met you, Eric, and we kind of like switched over to Fonz and everything. Shortly before that, we just decided, all right, we're getting small. Let's not fight it because small is kind of what we like. That's when things used to be good, actually. So we were trying to find ways to embrace it. And then we, so we just got really small in scope. So we got rid of all of our other instrument offerings, just do piano and narrow all of our focus to just young kids and realized that talking about like someday, because we also <laughs> had that imposter syndrome forever too, like um, that you were talking about, Karen, it just like, you know, we're new to this market. There's other people who've been, and we never could even imagine online lessons before this too, you know, and that's how we're trying to do everything right now. So it's just, just, we couldn't get anyone to talk about us. And then we had this crazy imposter syndrome and we realized that the imposter syndrome was coming because we don't, neither one of us is a trained musician. Um, my partner, Shauna, she's a teacher and I'm just taught myself pretty much how to play. I had some lessons early on, but that's pretty much it. And so we decided that looking to the future is what was making us an imposter syndrome because we didn't know exactly what that looks like. But right now is ex everything that we could offer and for young kids and for piano only. And then we ended up having only two employees. <laughs> we went into the pandemic with nine. And ever since we made those decisions and kind of like trimmed the fat of the business, then we started getting that word of mouth again. Like pretty much that. it started, it started picking up right again. Mm -hmm. so as soon as you got dialed in and focused, it just, mm -hmm. it's like the universe was like, Oh dude, this is what you're supposed to be doing. Awesome. Okay. Right. And then how, where are you, you said you were hoping to talk about this week or next where, what is your, give us a quick insight to your moment that you're in right now. Yeah. So the momentum started generating and actually on Facebook, like Facebook ads and Google ads. Now we're actually starting because we made the really simple. It's just like, here's what we do. There's this experience you can have right now instead of waiting for later. And then we've started getting more inquiries that way. I think the thing that we're struggling with right now is that, so we've, we found that momentum that we lost when we opened the school. We found that momentum again. I think what we're struggling with right now is how to scale that in like an authentic way because we're not good with the algorithms. We're not good with gaming the system. We're not, you know, and so I know we could get, be getting more clicks or with the ads that we're doing. Um, but we have all of these ideas too about community building mm -hmm. and um, getting our stuff in public schools and volunteering. And the problem is right now with the pandemic, we're not getting out into the community. Let me cut and you off really quick and just ask you a quick question. Do you, you are, are you growing? You said you're growing your business through paid advertising right now. That's what one of the, what's your CAC? Oh. What's your CAC for a new customer? What did it say, say it again? Um, if you're running paid ads, you should know what your CAC is, which is your cost to acquire a paid customer to the penny, right? Yeah. And if you don't know that, figure it out. And if you, and you need to compare it. So this is, if anybody's doing paid ads, there are two numbers you live by. It is not clicks. It's not views. It's CAC and LTV, right? Yeah. Your lifetime value can usually be assessed by 16 to 18 times whatever you charge per month because that's the average of how long a client will stay in this type of business. Yours could be different, but in general, go conservative, go 15 times monthly. Your LTV or your CAC is how many ads, much dollars in ads you spend to get one paying customer, not a lead, not a call, mm -hmm. nothing else matters. Anybody that's telling you to do paid ads, that's telling you anything up because paid ads suck, right? Yeah. And, and, and they work to get, if you have to use them to get there, they're good for what we call the air war, which is so you being top of mind, getting your blog posts out in your community um, as being, you know, that's great. Looking for paid ads to be like, hey, sign up for blue and green school. It's, a, it's amazing. Right. Parents don't like that. They don't want their social feeds gummed up. And, and, and two things that I see happen and I see so many social media 
pro marketers be like, oh, here's my secret success for generating a thousand customers is that those people didn't do it or they did it at another time. Because, right. and they, I've seen hundreds of people go down this thing without knowing what their CAC is, right? And you, there, there's, I could give you 10 names of people that are talking about it, but I know what their CAC is. And I know that generally it's not working for them. And so maybe yours is, and it's great for an air war, but be very careful. And I just want to reiterate, if you did one thing today and you are running ads, figure out your CAC and it, it may be good. Like for, from what I've seen is generally Facebook and Insta ads do not generate awesome um, leads, right? Because no, it's, it's a lot. It's, and that, that it, it makes our cost of acquisition. I know, I don't know exactly what it is, but I know it's high because it filters through too when they come in, just when they see how specific the program is. Yes. And so, 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 and plus you're like this totally heart centered person. So this is the thing that marketers never tell you is that marketing is hard, yeah. right? Is that marketing is long-term and the great, the great at scale marketers that you've never heard of that work for these really huge companies. That is what they're masters of is understanding that it's hard and that it's, and there's only one thing involved in great marketing, which is being obsessed about your customers, you know, and I'm going to just come back to that all day long today is like massively be obsessed about their success, right? That's, I mean, for you, that's your only win is because is, and when you say you, if you want to scale people talking about you, then just be freaking awesome. And to every student that walks in and checking in on mental well being, whatever it is you do, that's your secret spice, double that, right. Mm -hmm. And just grind on that. And know that long term, that's going to work, right? And um, you know, I, I I think it's I think it's it's a much it'd be much more sexy if I could say, dude, let me show you the algorithm. But yeah, you I know? don't. I that stuff just scares me too. Right, but think. and when you, I heard you talking about it, I could tell that you felt awkward about it. Like you're like, this isn't really me, but we're doing this thing. And the reality is that you are awesome. Right. And if just, and if, if you have enough clients now that you can just ultra focus on that awesome work and focusing on that, on that client base, it's going to work right throughout whatever the situation is, whether it's the pandemic or, or the whatever, you know, and I can tell you that the, the providers that I'm paying right now for my children, I am desperate for my kids to see them. Like my kid's basketball coach is holding our family together because he sees them twice a week. My kids, Capoeira coach and master is holding our family together. They are our therapists. Those are our dog. Um, you know, that's, that's the thing that is like, you know, critical because they're awesome, you know, and I can't stop telling my friends about them or posting to, you know, a, a simple strategy. I, I, I post an example of my mm -hmm. kid playing basketball with my coach's name. He was so pumped, right? Because most people don't think to do, to do that. But if you can prompt your clients to some way share your, your students, awesome success. Uh, and I, I think that'd be really wonderful. So anyway, I'm, I'm really stoked to talk with you more about that. And also this idea of obsession over customer and ultra focus, right? You know, writing a blog post, what's, what's the focus of it? Why would you want to do a blog post? Who's going to read it? If you write a bunch of blog posts and no one reads them, right? That's okay. Shift your focus, right? If you're not getting traction on a certain idea, you only have so much energy where, where can we focus that? So I, this conversation is so cool. Um, and I want to, I just want to kind of, is there anyone else that would like to share something? And we'll have time at the end to come back to putting this all together. But if someone would like, if someone else would like to share or speak up, just kind of just jump in really quick. I, um, and introduce, is Aaron? Yeah, hi. New person just going for it on your first time in the room. I like it. Why not? <laughs> Welcome, Aaron. Tell us about yourself. Where are you from and what's happening? So I'm from Preston, Idaho, and um, long story short is I used to be a music teacher and a math tutor, and I went into math teaching. My parents were also music teachers. My dad was a piano tuner and business owners, and so my focus has shifted. I found that um, seeing my parents struggle with um, their finances, I realized my passion was helping um, with that and so my business is still service based but it's um, actually helping with bookkeeping and I'm at a point in my business where my um, like the work I provide has helped me triple my revenue in just the past month and I still have my teaching job and so the time 
it's like I'm working two jobs. And so um, with my marketing, I'm working to, I'm like Karen, I'm an introvert. And so I don't really like to be out front center of attention. And so I'm trying to find that way I can market and like word of mouth is working. And at the same time, I wanna be more visible. Um, and so I found that building relationships helps with that. And, um, but that's, that's kind of where I'm at is the workload is good. It's coming in. Um, and at the same time, I wanna build that more so that I can just focus on that and, and not have the two jobs. So Did you say you, you tripled your revenue in the last month? Yeah. I'm like, what are you doing here? Goodness gracious. That's amazing. <laughs> well, it was pretty low last month. So oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> well, it still it's, sounds like a huge win. And so you're trying to shift, you're trying to grow your business. You basically do books for like appointment-based business type people. That's kind of, that's your angle and you're looking to grow that. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. And what's your, um, how do you, and how are you doing that currently? Like, how do you get the word out about that? I mostly just do it on Facebook. I post on my business page and my personal profile, and I'm starting to venture out and post in um, just like entrepreneur groups. And, yep. And yeah. So do you want to have a lot of small customers or a couple big customers? A couple big customers would be, would then, be nice. You know what? So then your marketing strategy is totally different right? Where you don't need, if you're out there talking to like piano teacher central, right? Where everyone thinks they know everything and they're, you know, charging $34 an hour for piano lessons. Cause that's what their teacher did back in 1977. And they're, you know, really, you know, it's like, that is, you want someone that's got a sleek school that's scaling that needs yeah. help controlling all this, you know, that my, my wife does books, right? She has one awesome client, you know, she used to run my school, until we started Fonz and then we didn't need, she didn't, that was the whole, the whole reason we started Fonz is my wife used to spend 20 hours a week, 15 hours a week running my, my school here in Seattle. And we basically automated her out of a job and which is awesome. It's a cool, fun story. And then um, she has this job working for this really beautiful uh, cloth, clothier, right? And she does their books. It's like 20 hours a week. It's perfect. Um, but it's like one client and they treat her like gold and she loves it. But if you had, if, with your skill set. Man, I mean, I can think of 10 big schools that would probably be really stoked, you know, multiple locations, um, managing a lot of staff members. That stuff is exhausting and it's stuff people don't want to do. Like in, in Fonz, we, that's the thing. I don't do fi like the finance day-to-day -day stuff for the tech company. I, that has to be hired out because I can't, it makes my skin want to fall right off my bones. It's so scary to me because I can't do it. Um, and I think a lot of creatives would feel the same way. So the question becomes, how are you, how are you going to try to find a couple keystone that you crush it for that they can't live without you? What are their pain points? They have no time. They want to grow their schools. They're having success in scaling. Um, to be honest, a lot of people hate doing books. I'm talking about me. Like I hate it so much. It makes me sweat just having to talk about it because I'm scared because I make mistakes handing it off is my single greatest joy. I have a killer accountant. I have an awesome team. I have a, a, a CFO and they just give me reports and explain them to me. Right. And mm -hmm. um, there are people, and I'm assuming you want to do a music school or something like that. Is that kind of where your, your heart is something in, in that realm? Yeah. Music's been my life. And so I feel really comfortable in this space. How many, uh, yeah. And you want something that makes money, right? So you, you want a firm that can afford you right? Because yeah. if it's going to be a keystone client, they need to pay. So again, what, what you, what you want to do is kind of narrow that scope down. And how many schools have you talked to about what their pain points are? I haven't, I haven't. Yeah. Any schools. So this is so cool. You stopped by because you, this is, and this goes to everybody. Who's your perfect customer. You know, we, we're all seeing everybody today that we've come through is like, Oh, we've kind of identified what a perfect customer is. Now we're actually talking about marketing right? When everybody in the group is like, ah, oh, marketing is what I need to help with. Now we're talking about like what marketing actually would mean, which is for you identifying what a perfect customer would actually be if you had one or two of them, right? Um, as opposed to getting 15 people, um, you know, that make, you know, $1,500 a month that, you know, want to get all, you know, whatever you want somebody that can, that's doing a school, it's probably doing 10 to 25 K a month in transactions, maybe has, you know, 10 to 15 teachers um, and is trying to scale into a new location, then you are a huge value if you're good at this, 
you're indispensable. So you, you talk to, um, and I can give you the names of some schools to talk to, to say, Hey, I'm just, I'm trying to break into this. I want to know what your pain points are, even though you kind of know. So you practice listening and then you hustle to get yourself in the door to be like, Hey, I know it's tax time. I know you're really busy. I'll do whatever I can, you know, this month to get in there. You, you don't need to close a hundred sales. Like, you know, you're not trying to scale a music school nationwide. You need one client, one really good one. So that would be my encouragement. And I think, gosh, it sounds so cool what you're doing. Cause I haven't talked to many people that are, you know, niched into that, but I would stick to your niche, you know, and find someone. I mean, does that, does everybody else kind of sound, if somebody wants to maybe just piggyback off of me or, um, and jump in, but is that helpful, Aaron? Yeah, that's really, really helpful. Thank you. And I was just wondering, hi, I'm Mike. I'm in Dallas. Um, good to see everybody. The thing that I was just wondering, Aaron, is are you, are you, and I'm just trying to understand a little bit, are you seeking arts organizations in general or are you trying to focus on music as a subgenre? I mean, because what came to my mind was like, um, you know, the, uh, the big orchestras, the nonprofits that, 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 that put you in a, in a different uh, uh, level of client as opposed to the small businesses. Are you thinking about that kind of stuff too? Or are you, or maybe even you're working in helping CPAs that might work for those organizations. Yeah, I hadn't thought of helping orchestras. I, I've known I wanted to be in this niche because I really, like I said, I feel really comfortable here in the music niche. And so um, I just haven't known yet how to break into it. And so that's, um, I love your yeah. advice about, you know, finding those pain points and, interviewing and listening to those. Yes, Aaron. Yeah. And, and, and Mike, I want to come right back to you because I want to talk to you about something else. Um, but again, you know, I focusing on who would be your perfect client. That's huge. Um, there are a lot of music schools out there that are doing between 900 and 1.2 million a year in transactions. There's a ton of them, right? Most, you know, medium to large scale areas are going to have one or two of those, right? They're competing viciously with, um, uh, school of rocks and they're doing great because they've got not, they can have an authentic um, kind of smaller town vibe. I could connect you with a handful of people that are super cool. Like the owners would talk to you. They probably have their stuff in order, but they would, they would probably be willing to spend 15 minutes to just say, Hey, cause you need to be obsessed about your customers. Right. And that's like, that's the thing. I hope that you would walk away from this and be like, wow, I need to be like obsessed about finding a perfect client and giving and being awesome for them because I don't know when I hear, I hear you, when I think about what the finance people do for me in my life, they are my therapists. I couldn't live without them. Like I am so grateful all the time that they do this stuff that I'm no good at. And so I know there's people out there, but I think you need to focus on understanding them. Right. Mm -hmm. And being like, and you, it could be pick a, you might find a school that's like, you know, trying to skip their first hundred K or, you know, just that's on the path to wanting to scale to 250 or 500 or, you know, 1.25 million. Those are kind of those sweet spots. You would be a value to any single one of those, right? Because you would save them enough time that whatever you're charging your hourly, you know, or your retainer to month to do it would be an incredible value as far as like their peace of mind and allowing them to focus on being the operator, being awesome, um, and that's how I would present that if, if, you, if you're not currently, you know, and the, I know a lot of the places that we advertise and I, and I actually know, I'll just say it, uh, uh, a lot of the people that talk really big games about that, whether they're schools or their area of expertise, whether in marketing or um, their, you know, acumen or their abilities, they're often not exactly as what would seem, right? There's a lot of silent assassins out there, like people that just do their deal and are really successful. There's a lot of people that are growing um, and you know, really on their way up. They often don't talk as much as the people that are <laughs> that are not. That's something I feel like I've seen. So you don't know who's gonna pop up, but I, I love your value proposition. And, and if you want to DM me, we can kind of talk more about how you might be able to focus that in and hone it. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I wanted to just check in really quick with Mike because it's great to see you. Um, Mike, you do such awesome work. I just wanted to, get a check-in man we, we've been talking about marketing today what how are your projects uh you know up to my elbows and alligators that's pretty much a regular day for me you know i mean when i thought about the marketing 
uh, uh, theme here today. I was I think about the thing that I kind of stopped doing, which was, and this was sort of segueing a conversation we had earlier, Eric, about um, trying to find people to take away jobs from me. Me, it's because I got two big projects that are on the plate that are going to take years to develop. Um, and I want to give my my teaching practice away but still run the company. So mm -hmm. in other words, I want to take my students but th take my students and give them to somebody else and they get most of the money and I just get a little piece of it. But what, I, what I'm having a challenge doing is finding the uh, candidates to interview because I haven't had the time to do it. Ah, you mean to have teachers work for you? Yeah, and it doesn't necessarily have to now because we're all online. It doesn't have to be people in my uh, local community. Because will you will you offer some mentorship too, Mike? Uh, yeah, I would have. Like, would to. you take it? Would you take a young gun out of college that was like wanting to do this and help guide them in your philosophy? I guess that would have to be part of that job description for sure. You'd have to help people navigate it um, just because of experience of being able. It's not so much the the pedagogy. It would just be the 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 ways in which to deal with your customers and whether or for that matter the students it's it's all of that it's all of that uh experience that you i think the mentoring would have to be a big component well, you know what mike the i want to cut you off and, and just share this like i follow all your social media all the stuff you put out uh it is always positive it's always building up other people it's always encouraging uh it's always i mean like it's always spot. Every time I see it, I'm like, dude, this guy's so cool. Like that's your brand to me is like, man, this guy's been around. He's always nice to people. He's always trying to help other people out. Like the way you talk about the artist you work with, you never brag on yourself. You're, I mean, it's, you sound like a real CEO as far as like that motivational. And so that's a skill set that is just baked into you, right? That's kind of your life. That's your lifestyle brand, which is like helping other people being cool. So when I hear you say, oh, I'm ready to hand off some of the teaching responsibilities, it seems like there's huge value in what you could do as far as impact is have people around you to see that, that that's a good way to live your life, right? And then, and that would be mentorship to your, whatever your teachers are, then that could flow down into your students, which man, that's just a killer marketing strategy, right? And so Anyway, I wanted to have the opportunity to tell you how much I, I love all the work you're doing and I listen to your music you're putting out and but I'm most impressed by the the um, the way you speak of others and, you know, kind of carry yourself. It's really well, cool. Well, thank you. Uh, I paid Eric a lot of money for, to say that. No, uh, you don't. <laughs> but, no. you know, it's, it's, the, it's the honey vinegar thing that we're talking about here. So, yeah. Jason, did you did you want to you can just jump right in. If you, we're, we're kind of in our last 10 minutes yeah. here. And this is, a, you know, anybody, you know, Whitney, we haven't got to hear from you yet. We'd love to. Uh, anybody that wants to just kind of jump in and maybe just kind of reflect on some of the things we talked about today. Um, you know, I had one. Yeah, go ahead, Jason. There's one thing I wanted to do as kind of an ending talking point, but please. I just want to jump in real quick um, um, uh, and refer to something um, that Mike was talking about. Um, and I just, uh, I feel like I always want to throw out this little nugget because it took me so long to, to learn it when we were trying to scale with other teachers. Um, but uh, just, a, just a little advice, I guess, would be, but um, when you talk about wanting to like hand off things and just take a little cut from that, um, I, I, would, I would say if you've got this really amazing, you know, vibe and kind of culture that you're trying to create and that you've been able to pull together, um, I, tr trying to find ways to grow that and provide an amazing experience for a teacher that probably wouldn't be able, or a few teachers who probably wouldn't be able to get that. Mm -hmm. Thinking about it more about creating that value than how much you're taking off the top will help a ton in finding the right people. Because one thing that we've noticed is anyone that we've ever hired to kind of get into this really awesome mindset with us, who's thinking about how much we're taking off the top has never been a good fit. Mm -hmm. So that was just one thing I wanted to, good experience. Wanted to throw out there. So if I understand you correctly, is the, 
the the premise of any conversation is not about the numbers and the finance. It's a it's it's about that philosophical uh, understanding. And yeah, and then there's a rate that you'll pay them on top of that. Yeah, I guess yep. what I'm. Yeah, I guess what I was expressing and and I just quickly was that, and I really appreciate what you're saying, uh, Jason. Oh, by the way, I know people in Phoenix. Maybe we can talk about that. But the the thing is, is that, um, you know. When I when I started looking for teachers years ago and it was a it was failure, it was because people seems like they want I say people individuals seemed like they they like the idea of working hard and really building something a, a, a career that they they wanted it to all come in you know airmail and it was just going to happen magically for them and I was really you know just kind of disillusioned that you know that work ethic seems to be one of the biggest challenges for and it's not in music you know hey you practice and you get good but the thing is i wasn't sure how to do that but i your point is well taken and i will remember that today for sure thank you beautiful thanks um whitney i didn't are you still there whitney i didn't want to leave you i it's it's fine if you're just listening i don't want to put you on the spot but i wanted to say hello if you if you wanted to say hello so you didn't feel left out <laughs> well thanks <laughs> Um, I, this is, I just needed to hear all this today because I just opened my studio a couple weeks ago and I want to be everything for everybody. Can't do it. So, no, what a great, what a great and honest thing to say though. We do want to be everything for everybody. Don't we? Yeah. Are you, roll, are you roller skating? No, I'm, be badass I'm actually were. like <laughs> doing, I, during the day right now, I'm nannying and cleaning for my brother. Oh so I have in- a little part-time gig going, which kind of allows me to do the studio as a slower build. Got it. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, I, we, Whitney and I had a great chance to talk. Um, you're doing awesome stuff. You're, you're going to be busy soon. I'm sure of it. So uh, thank, thank you. you for coming today, Whitney. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. Keep back to it. Sorry to interrupt your flow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I have a, I have a parting topic that I want to put into your, all of your minds that I was that's really important to me. I wanted to wrap this up. And if it was one thing to encourage everybody in, it's like I just got so stoked on this idea of wait for people in this group for the people that we're working with. I mean, these aren't everybody. This is this group people that are super into the work they do, making the world a better place. Um, obsession over our customers is the number one marketing thing that we can do. Anybody that tells you anything else, they're not doing what we're doing. Right. And so, you know, if you know, it's it's the reality is we must obsess. There is a second piece to it that I wouldn't challenge everyone here to practice because I think it's how many people have talked about imposter syndrome today and how much does that, um, how much does that tie us up? How much does that bind us? Uh, self-advocacy as a practice, right? And, you know, we desperately do not want to come across as inauthentic. We don't want to be schmarmy. I mean, if I say, who's a schmarmy salesperson in your mind? I love the word schmarmy, by the way. I'm sure all of you can picture someone, someone that's gross, someone you don't want to do business with. There is a path to being confident and being inquisitive, inquisitive to your perfect customer, right? Like Aaron should be inquisitive to somebody that would be a perfect customer to ask, can I ask you, you know, how could someone, how could I, how could someone like me really help someone like you? Cause that's what I'm really interested in doing. Um, uh, Karen talking to an executive who yes, might make a ton of money, but is still just a human and probably doesn't have great social skills, right. Or a really, a really great um, production capability to their voice. You know, how could, how much would it help if you walked into doing your pitch deck to a room of investors with no warble in your voice, speaking confidently and strong? Like, what would that do? You know, how much value is in that? That self advocacy, I have, I mean, I'll just share it is that in my music career, I believed I was a big fish in a very small pond in the Shendo Valley. I was a good guitar player, I was in the newspapers, I won all my talent shows, I thought I was going to be Van Halen. Um, at the same time, I thought it was cool to never talk about it, you know, to be like you know, the cool people like that I idolized. I just felt like that just happened to them. Like one day someone's going to drive through this like podunk town in a tour bus and ask me to, you know, play lead guitar for Metallica or something. And I look back and no one really, I didn't have a mentor that I didn't have any mentors in my life until I was probably in my early twenties, to be honest, that were really 
that had done things that had succeeded in areas that I just thought were magically going to happen. My best friend is the opposite of that. You know, he's a professional tennis player. He's an ER doctor. He's been to one of the masterminds before. He is a master of self-advocacy. And um, meaning he will walk up to his CEO when no one else will, and he'll ask a very direct question about his, um, you know, what, what his ownership in the company will be, uh, what a five-year plan will look like, and he'll negotiate it right there on the spot. And no one else does it. And I've known him now, we've been best friends for close to 20 years, and I see his successes, and I've learned from him how many of his successes have come from just being the person to say, I'm your guy. Yeah, like, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, it's like that Woody Allen thing of showing up, but it's not just showing up, it's showing up and advocating. Be like, I'll do it, right? And so, yeah, I'll be right with you, Karen. And that is the practice that I would encourage and wish for everybody in this group is to find ways to practice self-advocacy, right? And to practice putting yourself out there and taking that risk. So it sounds like um, we had a couple, Karen and Mike, I saw your hands raised. I'd love to have you pipe up. Uh, I'm gonna, we're gonna go in a few minutes, uh, but so feel free to stay. If you have to go, you can go. This has been an awesome chat. Um, Karen, what do, you, what do you have to share? Well, just first of all, I just wanted to say a thank you for, you know, for hosting these groups. I've gotten so much out of them. It's, it's been a very interesting pandemic time for me. Um, you know, coming to the, back to the whole idea of self-advocacy, something I've realized is I'm actually pretty good at that, but what I haven't been as good at is figuring out what my niche is. And a lot of it has to do with a lot of the messages, like especially as a singer, as a teacher, you know, oh, go for the younger kids group. And there's, there's all this advice to like, oh, the market's out there, just go for it. And I'm looking at this going, I've tried this, it feels like I'm running a cheese grater over my brain when I do it. So thank you so much for creating these forums just for a, you know, a place to very slowly in, you know, the human messy way we all do it, figure out where we're going. Because you know, speaking to the whole work ethic that Mike was talking about, like, it's so easy to think that you're just, am I just a lazy person because I don't want to do this? Like I've gone and done the whole, like, trying to do the hard work but when you're doing the hard work and something that is draining your soul then especially as a creative type it's just not sustainable mm -hmm. at all a a for me yeah. at least so finding that balance has been challenging and so thank you for creating this forum too oh my gosh it's Help so me thanks for being here <laughs> to let's, figure work, this out. Let, let's keep working together keep me post outs going let's help iron this out i mean i'd love to i can't wait to see you crush it but <laughs> dude take i'm dead serious Try the thing with the rates, and 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 I and I actually will help you get the word out to the this community that you might want to serve. So because I do yeah. have a really good into that, I've been working a lot on that network because I I need it. I rely on it so much to help me with bonds. So yeah, um, and I I'm actually getting to the point now where I actually feel confident. Like yes, when I'm given the in, I can actually make something out of this as opposed to being given the in and being like mm, I'm not so sure. I mean, well, you how? <laughs> And Karen, you know, how cool would it be? Maybe you and I pair on this thing. Maybe I start a series of posts to my tech Twitter that's like, hey, this is something we have in fonts. She specializes in this, you know, and like- She studied mathematics. She yeah, studied, so, she, she speaks no, technical. She, she, she got, yeah, so let's, let's I'd love that. Uh, Mike, you had a follow up too, friend. Uh, no, no, go, go oh, ahead. Okay, well, um, did anybody else? Cause um, we're about out of time. Ben, it was so good to see you here. Um, Awesome. Aaron, thanks for joining us. Uh, Jason, you had something you wanted to pipe in about? Just real quick. I just wanted to say I've been listening, re-listening to the book, Start With Why. Oh, so good. It's like, Dan. it's just been, all these things have been on my, like, this conversation has just been so good, <laughs> like, to be having at the same time as listening to that. So, thank you. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Thank you, Jason. I think, too, A, you've got the coolest name for a company of all time uh it's, it's so blue, blue and green so good uh and uh man you guys are doing great work down there and glad to be a part of it so thank you everybody so much um let's it's great to be back together again we'll do it again soon i'm going to post this as soon as i can but i think we should bring this conversation to the bigger group too because we really hashed out some great different scenarios today so thank you all have an awesome week uh dm me if i can help with anything else see you guys